So, I usually give a spoiler warning for these ending explains, but considering that this movie is exactly like the first, you've probably already been spoiled. Blair Witch, the sequel slash remake slash reboot that's so scary it had to drop the project and the the, is definitely going to leave people thinking. Some about the ending, and others on what was the point. And as I covered in my Emmy Award winning video, Stop Recycling Movies, it is pretty much the first movie. But like I stated in that video, having similarities to the first isn't always a bad thing. I enjoyed movies like The Force Awakens and Creed, but I'd have to be in complete denial if I didn't admit that they're taking heavy cues from the first. However, the difference here is the connection with the first. Because it's not like the original was this great horror film or that it carried some sort of artistic integrity, aka why you only remember the snot shot, but it's because it was a gem of marketing and it took advantage of the internet before it became what we know it to be today. The filmmakers also used the internet to draw the audience into their nightmare. Publicizing the movie with a Blair Witch website which treated the events depicted as real, they fortuitously sparked off a network of mirror sites, all of which got the world believing in the mythology of the Blair Witch. I mean, why bother with huge advertising budgets when word of mouth, as it's now referred to, can put you in touch with armies of fans convinced that the truth is out there. The crazy thing about it was that there was several movies that mimicked that style of making a documentary that goes a little bit over the top. There was even one called The Last Broadcast that came out right around the same time with a very similar theme, yet Blair Witch won out because people thought it was freaking real. And that aspect changes the entirety of how you see a movie when you believe it is in fictional. It's like those internet videos where you don't mind the drawn out intros or the Lubeski like cinematography cause you know it's real. Well, now that we know it's fake and the only gimmick that they pulled for this one was psych, it's not the woods, it's, it's Blair Witch. It just makes it another pile in the found footage lost and found. Just want to note, however, that while I didn't like the movie, obviously, I don't want to disrespect my boys Wingard and Barrett, because they are fantastic filmmakers and I'm sure they're going to kill it with Death Note. And while I don't blame them for getting that cash money, let's get into the Blair Witch and break it down. If you don't believe in the Blair Witch, then why the hell did you bother to come? I thought the movie was cool. Now, yes, there was another sequel that, like many horror sequels, get ignored harder than Will Smith's oldest son, but we're just going to leave that one in the Walmart bargain bin. As for this one, let's see how it adds to the Blair Witch mythology. We have James, who is the little brother of Heather, who, as we remember, all died at the end of the first, who spends way too much time on YouTube and gets catfished into going into the woods to find his sister. Alongside with them is the girl from The Visit, all grown up, shooting a documentary, his best friend he grew up with, and his overly attached girlfriend, who decide to go investigate in the woods. However, after going into the woods, they realize that Miles Teller 3.0 and his girlfriend legit Blair Witch projected them and that they themselves faked the YouTube video because it was just all a prank. They all split up while they're in the woods because they get mad at each other and that's when things go down once they break the stick figures Blair made at Joanne's Fabrics, which really ticks her off. They start walking in Bermuda Triangle circles, breaking in half, the black dude didn't yell timber loud enough, this girl with a xenomorph in her foot dies because she thinks it's a good idea to climb a tree for a drone she doesn't even care about, and these two die in the same way they did in the original. But look, there's still good stuff in this movie. For example, one of the issues for a lot of found footage movies is the concept of shooting footage or wondering where it all came from. And it kind of makes sense in this movie in the fact that they have drones for the very cinematic shots and the fact that they put earpieces so it makes sense why they're looking at each other in the face not having to believe that everyone's recording like they're Ricky Fitz. They do a good job of keeping it consistent and knowing who's shooting what, yet at the same time, I still don't get how they record pristine audio how or why someone found all this footage from different cameras and then edited it together, or the worst thing of it all, why they have to add a loud done every time someone walks on screen just for a jump scare. But 
you know, those are just my thoughts on that. There is a cool theme, however, about loss and repetition, such as James who lost his sister, who then also lost her life, which in turn made him lose his life in a very repetitive fashion. There's also us, the viewers, who lost our time and money and are also going to give into this repetition because we know that people are going to see these types of movies over and over again. But what frustrates me the most is that this is one of those type of movies that pulls the hey, it's up to you card, leaving everything up to interpretation, which really just amounts to they ran out of money and they couldn't finish the movie. And believe me, there is a cool mythology to this Blair Witch story, even though it sometimes contradicts itself. Like, you're never supposed to see the witch or else you'll die and they play her off like this Pulp Fiction MacGuffin until you realize that they have actually released official toy merchandising for her. But after looking into it, it's kind of crazy how deep the story goes and how they were able to blend it with reality. One of the most dramatic examples of this is the Blair Witch of Western Maryland, which originated with an extremely rare book. Supposedly written in 1785, it is entitled The Blair Witch Cult. Commonly considered fiction, this strange tome documents the fate of an unknown Maryland township cursed by an outcast hag. Several children accused Ellie Kedward of luring them into her home to draw blood from them. In court, the children's wounds would prove damning evidence, and Kedward was found guilty of witchcraft and banished from a village in the middle of a particularly harsh winter. She was assumed to have died from exposure. In 1883, a hermit named Rustin Parr abducted and murdered seven children in the county's Black Hill area. Parr stated at his trial that he killed them for an old woman ghost. In 1890, an eight-year-old girl was reported missing and search parties were dispatched. The girl was found the next day, but one of the posses failed to return. The bodies of the three men were found in Dixon Drove Cave two weeks later. The men had been disemboweled, their teeth pulled, and unrecognizable symbols had been carved into their faces, hands, and feet. The missing girl claimed that she had been led into the forest by an old woman who walked without touching the ground. In 1889, 11 witnesses testified to seeing a pale woman's hand reach up and pull 10-year-old Kayleen Treacle into Tappy East Creek. Her body was never recovered from a stream only two feet deep. For 13 days after the drowning, the creek was clogged with oily bundles of sticks and the water was undrinkable. These accounts are verifiable by newspaper articles and legal documents that are stored along with the only known copy of the Blair Witch Cult in the Maryland State Historical Museum. It was these simple folk tales told to her by her grandmother that first attracted Montgomery College film student Jane Steiner to the legend of the Blair Witch. A born journalist and a dedicated artist, after graduating, she raised $5,000 from family and friends enlisted the help of classmates cameraman John Miller and sound recordist Billy Madsen and began making plans to shoot a documentary on the Blair Witch. A clerk at a local convenience store saw the three that afternoon when they stopped to buy snack food and drinks. He would be the last person to see Jane Steiner, John Miller, or Billy Madsen alive. And after watching that documentary and doing my research, it turns out that was all fake too, but I didn't get mad that I got duped, more so the fact that the movie wasn't as good as this little documentary that I saw. Like, why aren't they putting that much effort into the actual movie if they're putting all that effort into the behind the scenes? By the end, we see that this whole thing is a cycle. The witch lures in whoever it wants, not based off of the mythology they built, but whatever helps with the sequel, and then kills them all by the end of it. You'll hear the excuse that it's been brought back for a new generation, but they've already gotten enough of these type of movies, and it also doesn't have the leverage that the first one had. To me, it just feels like a studio trying to pick up another horror franchise just like they're trying to do with Rings, because Hollywood likes keeping it green. So until Blair comes out in 2020, I'm just going to avoid all of these re-releases by camping in the middle of the Black Hills Forest. Maybe after the Cubs win, of course. Thank you guys for watching this video and a big shout out as always to the people who would watch my sucky found footage film if I made one. I'm curious to know since this movie is a sequel, what's your favorite found footage film? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section and until next time keep watching movies and I'll see you guys later.